Yo, collect and connect with Blake and Chad. Chad and Blake. Collect and connect. Blake and Chad's collect and connect. It's Rock English. Dave Wrestler. Blake and Chad's. This is Blake and Chad's. This is Collect and Connect. Is there any specific era time that has influenced you within your art? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, you know what I, I, I gotta say, I like, um, I like advertising art from different eras. Um, cause I, I like, I like a lot of illustration as opposed to, um, you know, Sometimes I like fine art too, but there's something cool about the era of illustration that was happening around the late fifties, early sixties in uh, America, because one of the things that was happening at that time was you had a bunch of, of these magazines and pulp fiction style books that were coming out and they needed artwork. They needed people to paint them. Um, and so there were so many artists in New York and Chicago and stuff that were painting a lot of these uh, these magazine covers for like, you know, real adventure and all these like, you know, different romance novels and stuff. And when you think about it, these were all art school people and they were making at that point a lot of money um, because that was the, the way to go. And if you think of old model kit boxes from then, all painted yeah. by, uh, you know, somebody at the time um, and, you know, it, uh, so so when you think about all these things i really like commercial art as just kind of like it, it it it's i find it inspirational because the other thing too is it doesn't have the reverence that sometimes fine art does but it there was so much of it and so much put into it now my my dad was actually a commercial artist when i was growing up he used to do a lot of magazine illustrations and stuff so i saw it from the from the end of you know it actually being made and the thing was, though, is that I noticed at a certain point, you stopped seeing it around because photography started to take over. And photography was cheaper for a model kit company, a magazine, to take a photograph and get some models to pose as opposed to have somebody paint it. Uh, so there's this very specific artist and these, these artists like Norm Saunders and, and people like that who, uh, who, who were like, you know, at the, the pinnacle of the game. Um, I, I find that inspiring because I also I kind of call myself the blue collar artist because I always approach art from a from a commerce standpoint. Like it was always a, a job for me, a way to make money, you know, to live, yeah. <laughs> to pay the rent. So I, you know, sometimes I would meet people who were like, you know, well, you made this painting, but but what's the what's the theory behind it, or what's that? I'm like, I don't know. What what do you think? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and they like hated that, that answer. <laughs> they didn't like that at all. And and I learned, fun, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, it's, I that's the like that day. I was just messing around. You know, that's all. Yeah. yeah. And I came up with this um, this idea. I, I some of the early paintings I made when I was trying to kind of like get some stuff in the gallery in the mid '90s. Uh, I was figuring out like what kind of subject matter to paint and. Uh, there was this friend of mine and she was an artist and she, she was looking that I, that I was, cause I was working like on Bratz Ellis Nebula and shows like that at the time. Uh -huh. And she saw a script that I was marking up and she noticed that in the margins, I had all these doodles and she was like, why don't you just paint one of those? Like make it big and put it on a canvas. And I was like, yes, that's what I'll do. So I started to do, to do that. And uh, you know, it, it was just, it, it was just that kind of, again, like, discovering something and then you know small to real you know you're saying down the yeah, side of your pages cool. here yep. you had doodles oh yeah you, <laughs> that you went off of that's awesome yeah because you'd be meeting and 
thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Right, and I and I come from an animation background. You know, um, like you were saying, I, I, the first uh, I did, I did some. Let's see if I go in a way back machine. I did a show uh, that was puppetry and animation called Team Smithereen, and that was um, that was back Disney in two thousand. What is that? Was that Disney XD? Right. Yes, you saw yeah. it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I got kids. <laughs> oh yeah. No. We did that one, and then, uh, and then during that time, I was developing a, a show I created called Robot and Monster for um, for Nickelodeon. Monster! Robot Monster, right now! Marf. And then once I kind of discovered the 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 the, the drawing, the sculpting, and everything, and I really dug into it, um, I found that animation was the kind of the culmination of all that for me. So I could do, you know, I could be part of the art, I could be part of the humor, and it all worked out. So and then of course, um, Robot Monster led to I did Boss Baby back in business for DreamWorks. Oh, for Stacey. In fairness, sir, the cat thought of it first. Yeah. Poop duty. Uh, and that was a little bit after I did the Garrick and Marvin series. Uh, then I, I've been uh, one of the co-EPs on uh, Rugrats, uh, the new Rugrats show for Nickelodeon. And I've been doing oh, that yeah. since 19. Nice. Yeah, I saw that show a couple of times in my career, right? The animation of that is just amazing. It looks so real. I mean, it's a cartoon, but the difference between 1990 and now is just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's my, I used to yeah. love that show when I was a kid, so now that my kids watch it's... This is definitely a repeat of uh, of uh, history for me. You see, Tommy, I just gotta have the cookies. They're part of who I am. Please tell me where they are. Please, please, please. I made it up special for you and me. I'd ask Tommy, but you know how he gets. Raptor, use your laser beams. Oh, oh yeah, and that was the whole idea when they brought me on board. The whole idea was they they were trying to figure out it was to figure out the way to how do we take the two D show we make it into CG but we keep the charm. And, and so I came in and that was, that was my primary job was to bring those characters into a CG world. Um, and I think all of my experience from sculpting and, and drawing and character designing all kind of came into play there because, uh, you know, you, you look at some of those classic Chupo designs and the thing that was great about them and was charming was they were so weird looking, but if you just bring them into CG like that, they're scary. <laughs> I mean, we got some early tests that we, we won't show anyone. Cause like, but, but then what you do is, is, is you just kind of use the artist's brain. You figure out what shall we keep? What shall we discard? And how do we keep this character? And it looks like Tommy and it looks like Chucky. And how do we get that hair? And how do we get all that stuff to, to look right? Um, and I think, and we have a really talented modeling team here and design team and the right, you know, the whole team here is fantastic, but, but figuring out the look was the big thing. Um, did, you have to, did you have to sculpt those first and then CGI them or? I, I, I didn't because what we, what we usually do is, is uh, the way we'll work it since I don't, I don't work in Maya or anything like that myself, but what we do is we have some really talented my artists and model builders here and so what i'll do is i'll work with them and i'll do drawings and drawovers and i'll do a lot of art to guide them and then we'll 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 slowly pull it together you know and then they'll they'll show me a, a model on a turntable and i'll be like yes it's looking good but let's do this let's do this and we just keep working on it refining it you know um but uh and that's one of the things you know right now is i love the VV platform for um, like the 3D characters and the robots 